Hello everyone, welcome to Economicspedia. So, today is a session from microeconomics theory. As you can see written on the board, the topic name that is the reveal preference theory. Well, in reveal preference theory, of course, there are various segments. But today in this session, in this small session, we are going to focus on a very small part, but yet very important uh, topic as well as the concept. So, today's discussion is about the strong axiom of reveal preference and the weak axiom of reveal preference. Now, this is a topic that many of the students, uh, also the aspirants, might have a little bit of confusion that where exactly this uh, strong axiom and weak axioms are different from each other and where we have to put a difference between them. This is a very common question that many of the students from economics who have read this reveal preference theory have this doubt. Mostly may, many of the students have. So let's begin today's session with the reveal preference theory. Now, this theory was given out by Paul Samuelson and he has assumed that uh, the utility to be ordinal in nature. And he has given this hypothesis that is known as the preference hypothesis. Okay. The term is preference hypothesis. Now, what is this preference hypothesis? So, you have to understand, uh, to understand this strong axiom and the weak axioms, you have to understand from the beginning. So, preference hypothesis, it says, in a very simple language, I'm going to discuss it. So, it says that if a consumer of an or an individual chooses, let's say, a consumption bundle A in any particular given situation. So, whenever this consumer is choosing this bundle A out of the alternative bundles that is available to him, then it is said, according to Paul Samuelson, that the consumer has revealed his or her preference towards this consumption bundle A. You getting it? This is how the revealed hypothesis, preference hypothesis has came into existence. So, in other words, we can say that since this uh, consumption or this composition of goods are being chosen out by our consumer. So, the other alternative options that are available to the consumer are inferior to the consumer. Okay. So, A is the chosen one and other alternative combinations, these are all inferior to the chosen uh, chosen composition or combination. So, this is what? This is basically the superior bundle of consumption, isn't it? So, this is the superior one because this has been chosen out and this is the inferior one because this has been left out. Or also, you also have to remember that this alternative consumption bundle are not something like that the individual is unable to achieve. Yes, the consumer has the capacity to have all these alternative consumption or consumption bundles. But yet the consumer is not favoring all these things. However, it is going, uh, the consumer is going only for this consumption bundle A. So this is where the preference hypothesis is coming from. And in this preference hypothesis, you will be getting the two words that is superior and inferior. Now let me explain it to you with the help of a diagram. All right. So for the diagram, let's say we have the two axes, of course. So this is good x I'm measuring on the x-axis and this is good y that I'm measuring on the y-axis. Now, let us take this thing which is denoting um, as PL. So this is the budget constraint that we are focusing. Okay. And let's say here the consumption bundle A lies and this is where B consumption bundle lies. Let's say C is here. Then let me just show you the alternative bundles. So this is let's say D, E, F and G. Alright. So these all consumption bundles are affordable by our consumer because he can afford this level of consumption bundles. So that uh, all those type of examples we are taken up. So let us say that our consumer is preferring the consumption bundle of A. Okay. So this is being chosen out 
by our consumer let me write it over this side so a this has been chosen out now if a is being chosen out then we can find that or let's do one thing remove this f point to here so that we can understand what does this a point actually means okay so for that is the only reason i've shifted this point so let me mark it here as m and come this side as m so at point a that means at consumption bundle a the consumer can have om amount of the good x and on amount of the good y correct now so whenever this consumer is revealing his or her preference towards a particular bundle so that means as we have shown just uh, as we have discussed just a few minutes back that that bundle is becoming superior to the other bundles and other all the bundles are getting inferior so we can say that all the points on the triangle of opl and also all the points within the triangle of opl are being left out so all these points except for point a are the inferior points clear so this is how we can say that all points of opl are uh, in or in and within let's write it like this in and within the triangle opl all the points these are inferior to point a now whenever we talk about this reveal preference theory in the consumer theory so there there is a basic assumption that our consumer is a rational consumer so being a rational consumer the consumer will always try to have such a consumption bundle which will at least either increase his or her utility for both the goods or for at least one good then only the consumer will move out from this point a to any further points now what i said utility will be increased for a rational consumer either for both the goods or for only one good keeping the other goods utility or the consume consumption constant now that thing we can show it like suppose we want to keep excess consumption constant and uh, we want to increase the y's consumption that means the utility of consumer is increasing due to increase in the consumption of good y so that will happen if we move upward from point a right and if i move laterally from point a to this side then i can find that my utility or consumption of good y is remaining constant however the consumption of good x has increased right so if i let me just draw it with a solid line so this whole box you can shade it also if you want so this part m you can also write it here am and this an you can also write it here that am that is the uh, distance i'm showing that they are equal however it is not seen from the diagram uh, although you have to get a hold that this uh, the distance are the equal one so this whole set this box the shaded box this is basically known as the superior set of consumption all right so this is how the reveal preference can be shown okay now one more thing that you have to understand that in this reveal preference a basic assumption is there about which uh, j r hicks has pointed out paul samuelson has not explicitly discussed it but j r hicks have pointed out that the assumption or you can say the postulate of consistency consistency this is a very very important postulate whenever we talk about the reveal preference theory now what is this consistency is consistency the simple definition of consistency suppose we have a consumer and the consumer is choosing consumption bundle a and not choosing consumption bundle b when the consumer can also afford to have consumption bundle b at the current initial situation so even when the consumer could have uh, had the consumption bundle b but he the consumer is choosing consumption bundle a 
then in no other situation this will happen that the consumer will be preferring B over A. So in nutshell we can say that once a consumer has given out his or her preference for consumption bundle A over B, then in any further situation, no matter what the situation is, the consumer can never choose B over A. This is basically the postulate of consistency. So whenever we have this consistency postulate satisfying our situation, then that is known as the strong axiom of review preference. So this strong ordering that we are focusing on this diagram through this diagram, whatever I am trying to explain it to you is the strong ordering. So this strong ordering is basically based on this assumption of this consistency postulate. So basically in strong ordering, what happens is that whatever the point that uh, between which the consumer can be indifferent, all those points are removed from the consideration. Like for example, if we want to take this example, now see, on this PL, three points are there, right, on the, on the budget line, point A, B, C. Now, our consumer is only choosing point consumption bundle A. So that means B and C are also available to the consumer and B and C, the consumer can be, suppose the consumer is indifferent between these uh, B and C points as well, then under strong ordering, all these indifferences points will be wiped out from the consideration. This is basically the strong ordering is. Strong ordering can never happen where there is no holding of this consistency postulate. So consistency postulate need to hold under any situation whenever we talk about the strong ordering uh, theory. Okay. Now coming back to the J.R. Hicks. Now J.R. Hicks is a person J.R. Hicks. So, this person has talked about this reveal preference theorem by assuming a weak ordering or weak preference hypothesis. So, from here basically the weak axiom of reveal preference generates. So, by the assumption of the Hicks. Alright, now let's move and discuss the weak axiom of reveal preference theory. So, J.R. Hicks in his weak ordering hypothesis, he has clearly mentioned that the consumer, if our consumer is choosing point A, then this means that the consumer is showing his or her preference over all the points lying within the triangle OPL. So, within the triangle, this word is very important, get hold of this. So, point number A or uh, consumption bundle A is reveal preferred to all the points within the triangle of OPL. However, weak ordering uh, also focuses that this point A can be however indifferent between all the points lying on the line PL. That means point A is definitely superior or preferred to this E, uh, D, G, F but point A can be indifferent between this B and C point. This is about the weak ordering hypothesis that J.R. Hicks has mentioned in his theory. Okay, now coming back to this uh, reveal preference axiom and let us see that whether it is consistent or not under the weak axiom of reveal preference theory. So to understand the weak axiom of reveal preference theory or which is also in the short form known as WARP or so to understand this let's take up another diagram. So again into this diagram on the x-axis I'm measuring the good x and here I'm measuring good y. Now let's take first of all our uh, first budget line. Let this PL be our initial budget line and here let's say the consumer is preferring point A. It lies over here. Now for some reason let us assume that the point, uh, price of x has changed and due to this change our not just price of x, the price of y has also changed. So due to that, we are finding that our budget line to shift and get flatter like this and I'm marking it as P dash L dash. Okay. So under this P dash L dash, when our budget line looks somewhat like this, let us say our consumer is preferring a consumption bundle, which is denoted here by point B. Now, before uh, any further 
discussion, let's again go back to the consistent postulate or reveal preference consistency postulate. What does it say? That if a consumer is preferring consumption bundle A over B in one situation, then in no other situation it is possible for that consumer to go for consumption B over A, right? This will be the postulate of consistency. Now, here what we are seeing, when the budget line is PL, the consumption is A, right? So, let's write it. Under PL, A has been chosen out, right? And under P dash, L dash, I am saying B has been chosen out. But, here, take a look. This B point was available when the budget line was PL, isn't it? So, this is the point where the uh, contradiction arises. Under PL, point B was there. Under that situation, that means in the initial situation when our budget line looks like PL, the consumer has gone for point A or consumption bundle A. But in the next situation, when the budget line shifted, uh, it became like P dash L dash, consumer is choosing consumption bundle B. So, this is actually a contradiction to the consistency postulate, right? Now, this type of behavior for any consumer will be ex uh, directly ruled out under this strong ordering, isn't it? So, this will not be supported supported under strong ordering. So, this hypothesis of reveal preference under which consumer's behavior of inconsistency is completely ruled out is also known as warp. Okay? So, this is the basic situation of what we are focusing warp. Whenever consumer's behavior is consistent with the uh, combination of consumption bundle that has been chosen out by the consumer, then that will be the situation which is also known as warp or weak axiom of reveal preference. So, to sum up, you might have some confusion. So, to sum up, we can say that if any consumer is choosing or is revealed prefer is directly revealed preferring consumer consumption bundle A under one situation over consumption bundle B, then in no situation the consumer can directly reveal prefer the choose the choice of consumption bundle B over consumption bundle A in any situation. This is basically what is. Okay, so this is, uh, first of all, we have taken up a contradictory situation to understand what this uh, consistency uh, hypothesis or the postulate actually means. And then whenever we apply that thing into this reveal preference theory, then we can have this what or weak axiom of reveal preference hypothesis. I hope these uh, sessions are getting clear, uh, helping you to clear some of the doubts that was uh, lying in your head. So for sessions like this, in which you find a little bit of difficulty, feel free to contact us and let us know in which topic you want us to take up the next sessions. And for any further kind of doubt, feel free to contact us. You know, you can also WhatsApp us, you can also call us, the number is visible on your screen. You can also mail us to our official mail ID that is ecopedia02 at the rate gmail.com. And to have a detailed notes, study material if you want on this topic of strong and weak action of reveal preference, you can also contact us for that as well. I really hope to see you in one of my next sessions. Thank you very much for your support. And if you like this session, do not forget to hit the like button. And if you're new to our channel, subscribe to the channel because the sessions we do are really helpful for you to understand and clear up the some of the important thoughts of thoughts and concepts of the economics. Thank you everyone.